Well, hey guys, my name is Hunter Garland. I am 2021 State Ambassador. Uh, this is my first year as a State Ambassador. And here with me, I have Miss Sa uh, Sa Sabre Johnson. I was about to call her Gilly. It's my maiden name. And, uh, <laughs> she's a first grade teacher, so we're uh, going to talk about that. I have seven questions to ask her today, so we're going to start with them. My first question is, what was your major in college? So I have a bachelor's degree in early childhood studies, and I'm currently seeking my master's in early childhood education um, to gain a class A certification in teaching. That's good. That's good. Um, my second question is, what is the day like on your job? Ooh, it's a busy day. It's a busy day. So I have um, anywhere from 18 to 24 kids throughout my day, and we start our day at 730 every morning where we spend about 15 to 20 minutes on morning routines. That's collecting any important notes from parents, um, collecting any funds for the day, and getting our students ready to exchange classes for an hour from eight to nine. They go to a phonics class, and they return to their homeroom classes from nine to 2.45 when they depart. So during that time, we are, we are busy with our reading and math lessons and extracurricular activities. We have around 40 minutes for lunch and bathroom breaks, which is between 11, 15, and 12. Um, they get back and they finish up any of their morning work from 12 till around 12.45, and then they line up for PE. They return from PE around 1.50, and from 1.50 till 2.30, we have time to get all of our work ready for uh, sit home work and the next day prepared. And we start lining up for buses and carpool at 2.30 or 2.45 between that time. So it's a busy day. It's never a dull moment. It's very exciting to learn the, the strengths and weaknesses of each child and try to, to get them out of those weaknesses and create even stronger kids for second grade. So, Oh, yeah. And it's good to have a daily routine, too. Most My certain. third question is, what is the best thing about your job? Well, I would say building relationships with those kids. Um, you're getting to not only learn different strengths of those kids, but to really be able to learn each, um, each child and their, their daily life and, and how they're all different. They all learn in different ways. Um, no child is alike, and they are just seeking love, and they're, they're wanting to learn. They're eager to come and and to learn something new each day, you just have to figure out how to engage with that child. So just building on those relationships. Yes. Um, my fourth question, it could be a little tricky because y'all did get an A on y'all support card from the state this year. Right. What changes could be made at your school? Well, there is always, always room for improvement. Even if you do have an A on your report card, there are things that you can improve. Uh, one thing in our school system that I think could be improved is communication. And that's with any career path and any uh, profession. You always have to have open communication. And it's a little difficult in our area because we live in a rural area that has, um, you know, not the best internet source. It's hard to find high speed internet. And so with with even our teachers and our parents, it's difficult to um, contact them through the internet. So if we had a better internet source, that would be amazing. But, you know, we, we are lucky to have what we have. Yes, we are. It's, it's been hard getting service lately with everybody being home. That's right. The fifth question is, how has COVID-19 affected your job past and present? Well... That kind of leans on the past question you give me with internet source. Um, COVID-19 has a lot of effects on many people, but with us as teachers, it's been difficult to contact those kids when internet's been our only source, and a lot of them do not have that. So we have to rely on telephone calls, and those that can um, have social media, we FaceTime with them. Um, but a lot of times you are just relying on actual mail service and to send them letters in the mail and contact with them in that way. So that's one huge effect COVID-19 has had on us and not being able to see face-to-face -face contact with those students um, for the past. Now present, we are still trying to figure out our school plan for 2020-21. 
So I guess that's one effect that that will have on us in the present time and future, just to um, make sure that we are sanitizing in the correct ways and keeping our students healthy. Yes. Yeah. Um, The sixth question is, how has COVID made you wish you've chosen a different career? You know, truly, Hunter, it's not made me choose a different career or want to choose a different career. Um, If such virus was going to happen, it it happened at the best time, if I could say that. Um, With having a small child, as as I do, I'm able to stay at home with that child from March till now, with it being close to the summertime and, and teachers having the summer off. So I was very fortunate in that matter to be home with my child. Um, so I think that it was a godsend to have this career, and I love to see young minds grow. So I'm, I'm not at all um, regretting the career path. <laughs> Miss Saber was one of our 4-H a- uh, agents in our yes. county. She was a good one, too. I loved and miss having her. You can see behind me, I still support 4-H even in my room. I have my 4-H sign, um, my name in the back. And I am, you know, it's very funny that you mentioned that, Hunter. Our second story in first grade that we focus on is about the life of a 4 H'er. And so I get to tell first graders what it means to be a 4 H'er and to understand the, the 4 H life. So I'm lucky to have that past. Oh, yes. I, I, I remember the day I walked in and they told us, asked where you was at. And they said, you wasn't with us no more. You went to teach and I got so mad, but I'm glad other kids get to have you now. That's right. And I'm I'm lucky to have had the relationship with, with teenagers like you that can come in my classroom and teach the younger kids. So, yeah. My last question is what advice would you give a youth that is interested in your job? Well, in any job, I would give youth the advice to not look into the career for money. Um, It's never about the amount of money that you will make. You have to be happy. You have to enjoy it. Uh, The money is not constant. It's not going to be something that always is the same. It will will fluctuate. So you do not want to choose your career path just based on the amount of money you will make. Um, You have to have that passion and you have to enjoy it. You don't want to call it just a job, but you want to call it a career that you love. So look at what you actually have to do every day. Look at the uh, pros and cons and make sure that you can handle those cons and outweigh the pros with those.